All right, guys, keep it to full screen, and then uh, we can start with the team number two. Whatever you have understood it. See, there is no one to judge you here. It's just a thing that you have you have went ahead, push yourself to do something additional, which is aligned with your goals and the target that you wanted to achieve in the next couple of years. And now you are towards that uh, towards that journey, and you have prepared something about it. Okay, just keep it a full screen and don't worry about it, and just prepare. Go for it. All the best, guys. So good evening, everyone. This is Odit. Here, I and Drumil will present you about introduction to analytics. It will be quite the revision of the previous uh, meeting that we had. So let's get started with it. So firstly, what is analytics? So let's say what comes to your mind when you hear the word analytics or analysis. So it might be analyzing uh, analyzing something to make a good decision about it. Simple. So in simple words, we can state it like. It is understanding of something using data and come up re with results in any form like graph or charts. So you are coming up with the with this graph and chart. The idea is uh, presenting it a uh, uh, presenting it in such a, presenting it in a such a manner that the other person would be able to understand it easily and be able to get the insights of it. So coming to the next slide, what is the need of this analytics? Why why we should do it? So the basic idea. Would be making a would be to make a better decision and make it uh, make use of it to gain profits. It is in the business terms, or make suitable ch uh, ch changes in and suppose we are in the shop in simple words. So according to the time of the year, what product should be ordered, or sometimes seeing the market, what uh, what product should be pre-ordered to take the advantage of it. All these kind of things might come. In analysis, and the third point would be finding the why of an event. Suppose you're running company, so your company is making profit or your company is making loss. In any of the event, you will definitely need to know why of it, and this why of it will be uh, uh, this why of it will be found with the help of analytics. So, what does typically an analyst do? In most of simplest word, I can say like it uh, will have some data collected in any of the form. That is a different part of the story. and we'll analyze it using some tools and techniques and from that we will get some insights so suppose you are working in a team within a in a company then you will provide this this insight to your higher authority so that he can use it get uh, use it get insights about it make better decision and get the optimal result and achieve the end goal what ever it might be so some of the examples in day to day life where we see analytics or we can say application analytics so the first one would be youtube recommendations obviously when whenever we uh, search any particular topic video on youtube you will definitely see the videos related to it uh, videos related to the same topic in our recommendation part and same will happen with amazon and flipkart suppose you buy a mobile so you will definitely see a recommendation of cover charger battery whatever whatever will be accessories and so similarly the third point would be nearest general store that we discussed and coming to the fourth one that is cricket so now uh, to uh, make it understand better let's say with example kohli's tour of england in 2014 where he was clearly targeted in the offside area so how the bowler came to know about where to target how to target what to do and what not to do there where the analysis part comes in so they had analyzed it see where he go, where he gets out quite often what are his weak areas and we can bowl in that area similarly in the next tour kohli performed well so here kohli used the analytics part make this weak zone into strong zone that is he made the changes uh, changes seeing in the previous data what about the mistakes and got the optimal result and the in the next would be mock result of our coaching institute that we might all been quite touch from quite one to two years that how it will give us the competitive analysis with where we stand in the crowd what how much question air times what about time what was the accuracy and all that the next would be google map this one but we all might use it and we can also consider it as application of analytics where we suppose we have to go to from point a to point b so here google map will show the all the possible path to us with the traffic the diversions the time what uh, what uh, route must be taken so here this always maybe king or the uh, is the application of analytics and you all have ever seen the guy in the laptop with the ipl auction he might be the analytic guy giving us the best team giving the best team to the any of the franchise with the required budget required skill and required team uh, combinations so now let's 
come to the next part that is type of analysis so basically there are three types of analysis that is descriptive predictive and prescriptive so the descriptive analysis is mostly analyzing what happened in the past so we can uh, we can say we will summarize the historical data and after analyzing with the help of tools and techniques we will get in the form of visualization dashboard charts etc whatever it will be so that we will get what happened in the past and what things need to be done so with the help of the data of the descriptive part there is the uh, predictive analysis to predict what will happen in the future so here in this predictive we will use machine learning algorithms deep learning and etc et things to make a good decision for the future with the help of the historical data so after both of this part comes the prescriptive analysis so this prescriptive analysis will tell us how to achieve the goal that we have set with the help of predictive suppose we have set we these are the steps to be taken so what should be done how it should be done at what time what uh, thing must be done that will come in the part of prescriptive analysis so this i, I have listed out some tools and techniques that if we are preparing for analysis tool that we must be familiar with and at least get a good hand on of at least some of them so here in tools according to my research and sort of said in the previous thing we must all must have with python that would be is to take now so now come to the data science part so data science data analysis we can say it's quite uh, four related things like but here data science would be an extra step from data analysis here you also will extract data interpret it and present in a simple form that others might understand but here it will also come or focus on the part of machine learning making a product how we will deliver the results to the end user that part may be included in data science so now main data scientist role are of two types this product data scientist and the other is business data scientist so data scientists are techno savvy guys which are more focused on making the product and how they will be able to deliver the result to the end user this product would be definitely made with the help of the insight that you got from the analysis and second comes is business data scientist so this business data scientist are the one which are more steps what are the insight from the previous project and how it will help us in the next coming projects so here we can say what are the primary responsibilities of data scientists uh, i would say their vital role is firstly to get the ins uh, to get collect the data analyze it get in uh, analyze it get insights about it and prepare a plan to execute so that uh, of the problems that we might have faced in the past will not again repeat and now it comes to analytical part this analytical part is mostly playing with the data part collect the data interpret it using tools or whatever the thing needed and prepare an insight a thorough insight on how it will be able to help us in making a better decisions and here i have compared all this data scientists engineers and analysts so just for view that i might share this ppt with you in for future for your reference so from here drumel will take over what is drumel so hi guys uh, from, so from here we are going to know a new or know about the different type of processes that uh, occur in the data science pipeline so next so here you can see the different type of uh, steps so first one is obtaining the data so of course the foremost step in the data analytics or data science part is to obtain the data then we are going to correct it correct it means that uh, data which is of, of which is of our concern we are going to use it and the next uh, step would be this scrubbing or cleaning the data now this step is the most time taking time consuming step because in this we are going to identify different type of problems in the data and we are going to rectify it so it's a time consuming uh, step now we are going to third step that is exploring or visualizing the data now visualization means now we are going to find a different type of patterns or trends which is hidden behind the data Uh, of course that we we find it with the help of the statistical tools and then we are going to make a, a chart or a graph so that everybody can understand it then next step would be the modeling the data that means now we are going to you know uh, we can say we are going to do a in depth analysis of the data so 
so uh, and in this end of the analysis we are going to do by the help of the uh, algorithm so suppose if we have uh, any machine algorithms in our toolbox then we are going to use it and then we are going to predict the future about it so if you have a better software for it then the efficiency of the you know outcome would be great uh, would be higher then interpreting the data that means right now, uh, now then uh, interpreting the data means now we are going to communicate with the other people that means now we are going to tell them that uh, how the whole process is going on and uh, what are the different type of difficulties that uh, you have faced the depth comes into the interpreting the data right so next So this is the basic flowchart of the analysis. We have our data, then with the help of the uh, many statistical tools, we are going to find what are the insights in the data. Means what are the hidden uh, any patterns which is inside the data. So we are going to find it next. So now comes the machine learning part. So basic principle is uh, of machine learning is to finding the patterns and with the help of that patterns we are going to make a better decision for the future so in technical terms creating algorithms that learns from complex function from data to make prediction on it we will know about it with it next so different type of application of machine learning like first one is a healthcare so what we are going to do suppose uh, we are going to make a uh, diagnostic report of a patient and a doctor who is a thousand mile away will review about it so it is a better application for it social network now in this we can uh, find the correlation between two means person means what are their uh, similarities dissimilarities like for an example in uh, dating apps like tinder or whatever you can find the uh, you know we are going to find the different uh, personalities so more about it you can ask to sandeep or shiva yeah, they know about it very well moving towards to finance part finance means here you can uh, try to predict the fraud uh, fraud that actually occurring in the company like uh, through the debit card or uh, credit card or you can uh, what, uh, you can predict that whether the person will going to pay your loan or not so you can find it from this application of machine learning then of course as my friend would be said the many application in e-commerce then in biology so there are lots of application of ml in there and next so how the machine actually learns so it's a very simple thing means first the machine will try to find the patterns in the similar data means if, if we have a better information better information is if we have a right information about the data then the accuracy will be a, a, very good and because and by that patterns the machine will try to predict the future so it's easy we have a past data we are the machine will find the pattern and we are going to uh, we are going to formulate about what will be the things we, uh, that actually happens in the future. So next, so types of machine learning. So there are, there are basically three types. First one is supervised. Supervised means uh, we are machine will learn through the level data. That means we are the humans will provide the data and machine will, uh, and the machine will going to answer it. So there are two types. First one is regression. Regression means we have a continuous data. Continuous means what? Like for an example, suppose uh, yes, we have a question that if uh, whether he is going to buy this item or not. So oh, sorry, not that one. Means uh, continuous means there is no uh, there is no like uh, disrupt. Uh, suppose wait. Uh, classification means uh, like you have a question like yes or no type as I said earlier whether he is going to uh, buy things or not so there are the two groups either yes or no so that comes under the classification and when there is a continuous question like regression where like uh, what will be the temperature tomorrow so that comes into the regression part but you have noticed that in uh, both of these we are going to provide the data and machine have to answer either yes or no or like that in a simple language but in unsupervised 
we are not going to provide a label data means we are hopefully we are hope uh, we are hope that uh, uh, machine will actually answer the right uh, information so we are not going to provide any data so in this the clustering type of uh, data we will going to formulate means you have a uh, uh, machine have a data set and it will going to find a different type of you know um, different type of uh, groups uh, which has uh, which has a similarities so it will going to find it uh, it will going to formulate that group and basically now from that it will going to answer your question now reinforcement in the uh, it is nothing but a reward penalty based system uh, reward penalty based system that means if the machine will uh, give a correct answer or if machine will learn uh, correctly then uh, there is a reward for the machine and if the machine will fail to learn the coding uh, to learn the data then there is a penalty for the machine and for an example it actually happens in the where for in the self driving of cars like in tesla it actually uh, they use this type of uh, machine learning thank you wow thank you guys thank you team number 2 i mean uh, udit and uh, drumel you guys did fantastic job it was really great to hear you i can see that you completed the whole thing in a uh, speculated time itself everyone completed that and it's it's good to hear couple more things i would like to add from my own experience whatever the things that i have noted it right now so the thing is that ki, you did a very good presentations and drumel the key points that you shared in your presentations was good it was a good idea never add too many words in your presentations ppt always add key points and then explain from your own notes that you have prepared in the back end all right and you did that fantastic job uh, dromil next time onwards every people you should uh, think about that as well okay so always have the key points couple more things that you covered not only from the book itself but also you went ahead and couple uh, covered couple of things which were covered in the previous recordings the first sessions that was a good part and yes uh, it was a first presentation and do spend some money in your uh, earphones and mic there was some uh, background noise but yeah with uh, hopefully everyone can bear with that <laughs> all right so cool uh, so let's start with the team number second team number i mean team number 8 is it uh, shivam are you guys ready yes. so good evening guys my name is sachin saying and shivam saying team number 8 presenting the machine learning algorithm uh, shivam next slide okay so uh, what is machine learning as already has told by the drumel so machine learning uses to find the pattern in the data and using that predict the real uh, real real life problems like teacher or answer critical questions so there are different algorithms available to analyze the data each and every algorithm has its own strengths and weaknesses like each student has own, has their own strengths and weaknesses uh, some models are easier to understand but lack prediction power on the other hand Some are very good have very good prediction power, but lack interpretation power. For example, let me give you some examples. So, uh, actually, uh, if uh, let let assume that we are have given the task to uh, give the loan to particular person, and uh, we are assigning the loan uh, based on their income or uh, expenditure. Now uh, we have uh, we have approved the loan, and now we have to uh, we have to answer the higher authority why we have taken the loan. So to answer them, it will be easier to uh, easier to explain them with the model which is easier to interpret rather than explaining explaining them with the model which is harder to explain, right? So yeah, so there we were using the there we were, we are using the linear regression and uh, logistic regression instead of some complex models. So there are seven different uh, machine learning algorithms. Uh, the first one is linear regression, logistic regression, KNN, uh, support vector machine, decision tree, random. the random tree and uh, gradient boosting machine the first four will be explained by myself and the next three will be explained by the few so next slide okay so linear regression so linear regression can be used to see the relationship between dependent and independent variables like uh, uh, and this relation can be used to predict the feature so, so the equation is y is equal to mx plus c which is we have already studied in the bcc level and this relation can be positive negative or neutral for example uh let's say give the for uh, example of positive correlation so uh let's let's say the y axis is my income and y x uh, and x axis is the customer approaching to my shop so as the customer number of customers increases my income will also increase right 
So this is the positive correlation. Uh, let's talk about the negative correlation. As Saurav has told us in the previous session, he has one shop of vada pav. So if uh, let's let's assume that uh, y axis is the income and x axis is the uh, amount of rainfall in mm. So if the amount of rainfall increases, the income will reduce because the, the number of customers approaching the shop will reduce. So the the correlation will be negative. So using the positive the positive and negative correlations and relationship between dependent independent variables, we can find the uh, we can uh, uh, predict the future. And the third one is a neural correlation or neutral correlation. So now this model is easier to understand. You can explain this model to anyone. Or uh, work really well for linear relationship, but it is hard for the complex. Uh, it is hard to use for complex data sets and give poor results for the non-linear relationship. So it works well for categorical data like classification methods, uh, as explained by the Drumin. Uh, classification method is answering yes or no. Uh, it is commonly used to predict the probability of event occurring. So there is a uh, so logistic regression use the sigmoid function, which is f of x is equals to one upon one plus e to the power of minus x. So let's explain one. Uh, let's explain this uh, algorithm with one example. Uh, let's assume that one person is visiting the uh, Amazon website to purchase the mobile. So uh, and it spends the x amount of time on the website on that website. So provide so based on that x x minute or x time, what is the probability the particular probability that he or she will buy the mobile? So here x, which is our independent variable, is a time here he or she is spending on the website, and y is the uh, is the probability that he will uh, purchase the mobile or not. So <laughs> sigmoid functions try to convert the independent variable x into expression of probability that ranges from zero to one. It is as similar as, as similar to lead, uh, linear regression. It is uh, it is easier to uh, implement and understand, and but it works poorly in capturing the complex relationship. Okay, so next slide, Avish. Okay, so K N N stands for K nearest neighbor, and the K in K N N refers to the number of nearest neighbor used for prediction. So preferably K is a uh, small odd number. Uh, I will tell you why this is odd number. Uh, so. In nutshell, here we try to predict the class of particular data with unknown class. So let's uh, explain this by some by some examples. Uh, let's say we have two classes of students, class A and class B. Class A is a student who failed the examination, and class B is a, a, a class of students who passed the examination in uh, based on the, their marks in maths. And we have one student uh, with this question mark here. Let's say the student is X. So he has got uh, some marks in maths, and now we have to decide. Yeah, in which class he belongs? He has passed or he has failed. So we will try to find out the marks of nearest student who uh, who is passed or failed. Uh, so let's say uh, we will decide this by the k value. Let's say k is three. So the, we will decide the three nearest possible students' marks, which is close to the student's x, and uh, based on their classes, we will decide the class of student x. So as you can see that in the circle, there's two students who has passed. And this one student who has failed, which is nearer to the marks of student X, so we will decide, we will uh, predict that the class of student X will be he is passed. So, uh, and the k value is odd number because if it has been even and uh, two red and two green has has come, then we could not have decided the class, right? So we want the odd number so that the, there should be possibility of classes uh, based on the. Nearest class. Okay, then this algorithm is good for the large data, learns well on a complex pattern. It has it is hard to find the right k value, and it is expensive and slow. Next, Abhishek. Next, please. Okay, support vector machine. It is algorithm used for classification problems. It looks for some pattern in the data set and draw best suited line that separates the pattern. So this algorithm focus on extreme values. Extreme values. Here you can see that the two green dot and one red dot is the extreme values, which is support vector to create the hyperplane. Hyperplane is nothing but a line. So uh, and it is good for non-linear relationship and it is hard to interpret and it is uh, sensitive to the outliner. There is one more term uh, I would have explained that in my laptop, but uh, there is one more term called call as margin. Uh, how we have deciding the line should be inclined in that manner only. It can, it could have been inclined in other ways also, right? So we we are drawing the margin from the our support vectors, and that margin distance should be uh, largest, and and the margin center is decided as a hyperplane. I could have explained this in better way if I would have been on laptop. Uh, so I am passing to Sivam uh, to explain the further details. Okay, oh, oh, thank you, Sandeep. 
ओके कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट एल्गोरिथम वी हैव डिसीजन ट्री डिसीजन ट्री इज वन ऑफ द एल्गोरिथम कम अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ क्लासिफायर क्लासिफायर इन द सेंस वी ओनली हैव टू आउटपुट्स लाइक यस और नो लाइक इन डे टू डे लाइफ we have our mail box we got some mails and uh, some of the mails uh, directly came into the spam folder how this algorithm is working this is working one of the way to work uh, work work out this algorithm is decision tree in decision tree we have nodes and each node is a question in itself and uh, there is branches like we are showing in this uh, image there is branches branches is showing here the answers to those questions and uh, uh, we have a root root node root node is a top most question like uh, in this decision tree we have a top most question or uh, we can say a problem is a person fit or unfit so we are going to decide by his age like age is below the 30 or above 30 then there is two possibility yes or no then again there is one question he he is eating uh, pizza regularly or not then there is two answers yes or no then uh, is he work out daily or not then there is two answers yes or no so in the, this sense uh, decision work uh, decision tree is algorithm is working uh, so <coughs> it is easier to visual, visualize the problem and uh, understand but uh, sometimes it's lost its predictive power like in the sense uh, we are only considering here at, either he is work out or not but we are not considered considering his uh, work culture like he has sitting job either or he has field job so it it uh, it should be considered but in this entity it is the limitation of the algorithm next slide <clears throat> so coming to random forest random forest is nothing it's the bunch of decision tree algorithm like uh, in decision tree we are using only one tree for getting our final output in the form of yes or no but here what we do we are using more than single decision tree to get our output uh, it uh, comes under the in ensemble classifier ensemble in the sense uh, here we are using different different decision trees and then after uh, coming to one decision from one decision tree like yes or no yes or no yes or no we feed this output of different decision tree to one single algorithm machine learning algorithm and then we finally get our uh, uh, class like uh, it is yes or no so it is very hard to interpret as it uh, it is combination of uh, so many uh, algorithm but uh, one of the advantage is that it is a accurate performer as we are using so many algorithms side by side so if even one algorithm is giving us wrong value then another algorithm is giving us accurate value so it is more accurate as compared to decision tree but we have less control to this algorithm as compared to other algorithm because random uh, what we have done in the initial phase of this algorithm we have a data set so we select uh, some attributes from the da data set to made a boot extract data set from our original data set this is a random selection so we don't have any uh, check on this selection so it uh, uh, it is not in our control and after uh, forming this boot extract data set we are going to select uh, our attributes also randomly so all these process is random so we have le lesser control in this uh, algorithm decision is mostly based on the majority output like we have here showing in this <coughs> diagram there are six decision tree different different decision trees so we get one output from each of them like yes or no yes or no so final output is based on the majority of outputs we are getting like we are uh, getting four yes two no then final class we are going to decide is yes next slide G uh, coming to the gradient boosting machine it is also one of the ensembler method and it comes under the cat category of classifiers uh, what what we are going to do in this uh, we aggregate many models and 
in when we feed one data set to one model like uh, if we consider the example of decision tree we fed our data set to decision tree we get some uh, output in the form of yes or no but there is some error so in the next step we are considering error as a well as the output of first step so in the successor phase we are gonna uh, eliminate the error in the algorithm in the output of the algorithm so in this way we, we are going to proceed uh, to our final output so it is very useful for predictive models uh, as it is very accurate but uh, it is not very well suited for handling large uh, large dimensional data because there are there are number of steps included in this so it will take uh, time so that's all uh, on the machine learning algorithm and uh, the part uh, related to interview preparation and uh, uh, resume building uh, we, we are gonna present only through our notes yeah please thank you uh, so like first sandeep is gonna uh, let project. talk directly i have one doc but i can't share it so uh, sandeep and shivam do one thing if you have your docs or notes right just talk through it no need to present okay. it so uh, bhavish thank you for sharing your screen and you can unshare all right Okay, so uh, first I would like to talk about project. So if you are doing some project, just keep in mind uh, there should be some questions that uh, that you should prepare for yourself. That interview is gonna ask you ask from you. So uh, first question is how you started the project, uh, why you thought it was important, uh, your way, your process to do that project, your result, most important what you have learned. So in nutshell, you should have one. Uh, you should be a very good storyteller, and you should convey that to the interviewer. Uh, you should not do some sci-fi and very high profile projects you should do very common projects and common that should be unique in its own way but uh, you should be very clear and specific what you have done what you have learned which tools and techniques you have used there and that should you convey to that interviewer uh, the, before doing any project or personal project you should ask yourself how it is different from other projects that that should be unique in its, uh, in, uh, in, in its own way uh, talking about resume uh, it is all about selling yourself, right? So interviewer just give glance on the interview uh, on your resume, and it will put it on denied or accepted file. So uh, your resume should be uh, built in a systematic manner. So the first point I would like to add is professional summary. You should add the professional summary. In professional summary, uh, you should add. You should ask yourself, who are you? Uh, what skills do you have that interviewer should know, and uh, for which role you are applying for? Uh, second point is educational and certificate uh, the education you should put in a chronological orders certificate you should uh, you should put which is very much uh, very important for the role and which is uh, relevant to the role uh, third point is management and technical skills uh, for the technical skills some of, uh, some of some of you are in the baha some of you are in the isra so you should put that in uh, put that in the resume for the management if you have if you are the head of some committee or you, if you had leaded the 10 or 15 members team then you should mention that in your resume uh, third one is the professional experiences uh, if you are if you have done the job you should be very clarify uh, you should be very clear about your roles and responsibility what you have done there and uh, what you have done that impacted the organizations your position of responsibility and if you have done uh, more than one job then you should be mentioning that uh, in a chronological orders the third one is uh, the, the fifth one is personal project if you have done the personal project you should be very specific about that as i told earlier uh, awards and publications if you have if you have some awards and you have done the publications you should mention there the next is linkedin profile it is as good as your, your resume nowadays yeah. interviewer interviewer are going uh, going to linkedin for the recruitment so you should prepare your uh, linkedin profile so that it is it is looking at first so uh, in about you should mention try to mention what position you are at what for what position you are looking at which tools you are using and from which time from how for how long time you are using that tool uh, your key skills like python r sql excel these are the tools but apart from that if you have good communication skills good management skills good project uh, project building skills uh, if you are a good leader then you can mention that your key achievement that key achievements should align uh, with your uh, with the role you are uh, with the role you are looking for and the role you are at and the last one is contact your contact should be uh, active like you should not mention any contact which is not active you should mention the contact which is active 
that's it. Uh, the next part interview will be uh, talked by the CEO. So coming to interview preparation, what mostly you was uh, done that uh, we sent a uh, mail regarding any opening in any uh, company. Once our uh, HR or any technical person take our interview, what we have forget that uh, we are not gonna do follow up on that thing. So it is the most important part of an interview. We should have to follow up, and uh, follow up in the sense uh, we have two techniques. Like uh, after uh, three to eight hours, we are gonna say thank you for uh, responding to my application, and uh, after ten to fifteen days, we are gonna send uh, another mail. Like uh, 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 like mentioning that uh, I have given interview in so and so for so and so position in your company. What is the status of my uh, and uh, if uh, it is not clear from their side, then you can also ask whenever I am going to get any status. So this is uh, related to <coughs> the follow up after uh, once you give interview for any position in any company. Then coming to the behavioral part of the interview, it is the most important part. Even if you have technical skills, this is the part that gonna decide whether you are gonna hired by a company or rejected by a company. It the question included in behavior part doesn't have any specific answer. You have your own answer to each and every question. Like uh, I I can give you some of the example of uh, behavioral interview question. Like uh, tell me. On which role you have? Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, like, uh, tell me a time when you de demonstrated leadership in your previous company. If you have some work experience, or tell me role of responsibility when you are, you were in your college. So these questions are uh, specific to each and every one. So tell them a story, what you have done and how you have done. Indulge them into your answer. Like uh, there is a. A very simple and most open asked question. What is your biggest mistake? What we often do, we just hide our mistake. But uh, what I think we should have to tell that it's uh, it's my mistake during that project. But uh, I have refined this this particular way. Second uh, question related to this is what is your weakness? So you have to mention that I have this weakness in my professional or personal uh, life, but uh, I am working on it. And even if you are not working today, how you are gonna cope up with this in future? And uh, coming to the technical interview part, as we are talking about uh, analytics here, so there is uh, two uh, main uh, <coughs> part in this: the te technical and analytical part. In analytical part, uh, what most of the companies uh, uh, do, they give you a case study, and you have to tell the um, person who is interviewing you. Is a solution to that case study. After, <clears throat> like, uh, there is uh, some product-based company which give you their case study that we we have such and such problem. Give us a solution. So you have to give them solution. Another part is technical part. Part in technical part, what uh, most of the company do? They give you one or two data-based question, and you have to give them solution by using different tools and techniques. It's up to you what you are using. There is no hard and fast tool and in that, so you can use any tool and techniques you know. <clears throat> After uh, these all techniques are for online interview. If uh, you have some on-site interview, then there are more rounds like uh, whiteboard rounds. In that round, what happened? Uh, they give you a uh, uh, they give you a marker and uh, there is a whiteboard. They Put a question from you, and you have to answer on that whiteboard. And there is also some business uh, case studies uh, there. And if uh, you have done any project uh, related to that particular field which they are hiring, there may be some uh, project, project presentation. So be ready for that if you are going for an on-site interview. It is going to be more intensive as compared to an online interview. So. Uh, this this is all for interview preparation, and uh, uh, Shivam, uh, is there anything else yeah. you would like to talk about? 
uh, there is only some uh, questions like uh, sometime hr asked us uh, like okay. do you have any question so uh, you can uh, ask uh, like uh, uh, i have uh, noted down how, how we are going to ask so we can uh, ask like uh, uh, <coughs> once i i will be hired what is my role and responsibility in the company and are you also considering internal uh, candidate for that particular role and uh, from how many time uh, for, from how much time this role is uh, vacant in your particular company uh, and is this someone currently working or uh, I, only i am going to work on that project so that's all from wow 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 that was really great a big round of applause for everyone Sandeep, Shivan Saini, and Udit, and Roman, you guys did a fantastic job. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the things, you know, uh, we have covered a lot of things today. There might be several things that people you may have understood. In fact, those people uh, who have already made their notes, uh, they might find it very comfortable and cozy while uh, going through the slides and all. So that's why I wanted you to prepare for notes. Right? Second aspect is that uh, during the whole uh, this presentation, we understood that how, how we started. So there is something called the golden circle. Listen to it very carefully. There is something called the golden circle. It is uh, basically it is talked by Simon Sinek. If you don't, uh, if you haven't heard about it, he has written this book, Start With Why. Okay? So he talks about these three things, right? the golden circle. Always start with why. That is your core values. The golden circles start with start with why the very first core values so we started why why do you want it to go for me why do you want it to pursue this analytical courses we understood it and then you yourself come forward okay I, I really wanted to do this I understand what what I wanted to achieve in my life what exactly I wanted to have and why did I wanted to have you understood those parts couple of more things we also touched here today uh, today after discussion that uh, what we need to exactly where we need to what is our target after one or 1.5 years where exactly I wanted to be that you also understood so basically the why part is clear why you wanted to do it coming to the second part the how part how part is the path the journey the second aspect is that how the path the journey now you understood what your path is going to be right just give me a minute. Let me mute Shivam. Okay, all right, good. So now the second part is the how part, the journey part. What is the path you, or what is the path that you are going to be? So Shiv, Sandeep, uh, Sandeep and Shivam discuss is very fantastically. They discuss every aspect of it. Not only it started from the very uh, the basics of the machine learning algorithms, and then understanding the foundation of it, various uh, algorithms that is important for it. We didn't cover the RNN, NLP, and deep CNN, right? That is advanced concept that we will. But first, we need to understand the statistics part, the exploratory DT analysis, and the normal uh, advanced analytical tools, right? So that is the how part. Coming forward, okay, how to prepare, how to pre make your presence uh, very valuable in LinkedIn. So in the next coming session, I'll be also conducting a session where I'll be teaching you and guiding you to the each and every framework and the processes. How can you uh, make your LinkedIn profile very attractive to the uh, um, recruiters and other people in your network right secondly moving forward the path journey also leads to there should be also something that you need to do in front of uh, the rec recruiters the HR talking about the interviews and everything right so that is the path that what uh, the path the journey path now the next thing comes in the golden circle is the what part so there are three things first is the start with why second start with how and then third thing is the what part Anything that you wanted to do in your life, kuch bhi jeevan mein karna hai, whatever the things you wanted to do in life, always start with why, then understand what are, how are you going to achieve that and then work on the what part. So in today's session, first session we discuss and before that we understand the why part, today's session we more understand the path, the journey, the how part. In the next upcoming sessions, I will be guiding you to what you need to do exactly to follow these steps on the path. Okay. Couple more things I would like to comment on the, uh, the thing is that, okay, for example, uh, the classifier part, no, you discuss only yes and no. So definitely decision tree may yes or no are there, but also classifiers cannot be just only two values. It can be multiple uh, classifiers. For example, let's say there are four variables, right? Four ways you can categorize it. 
simple general obc and obc and sc st these are four categories for example if i have 1000 people of data so let's say I'm, i'm an hr right and i'm doing some hr analytics right so what i will do with that i will directly classify the whole data set in four regions east west north south of india right so that is also one part of the classification second definitely thank you sandeep for covering that margin part and definitely you will also go ahead and understand the mathematics behind it abhi kya hai aisa mat socho ki we have just covered it for the very first time maybe are becoming very expert of it no it's just a scratch of it just to get the flavor ki what exactly we are looking what uh, what we, what exactly we need to do right so again that's why i asked you to prepare the notes in your word file so that you can go back again and again and again and again to revise it to revisit it to write it in a simple forms to define the definitions very clearly to uh, explain some things in your own words ki yes this thing i did in my own life coming to the part uh, definitely do include couple more things that we need to uh, do in your daily habits first thing is always be very humble never ever let your ego comes to depend bhai ab to normal college se the aa gaye iit mein ab to bahut bade aadmi ban gaye i got hey that ya apne idhar ka baap hai no 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 never do that always become iit taught you the humility part okay the peer network kabhi bhi ek dusre ko push nahi karna pull nahi karna always support each other each other and that's where the humility comes the the uh, the tree which bears a lot of fruits is all that that tree is only bows for right why it pair juki rehti hai so be that person humility by talking having conversation always wish everyone good morning good evening thank you and please and uh, probably shivam you can also add ki yeah please next slide please so please is just a very small word but yeah we we most of the people i also many a times forget it many times other people forget it but this is a very small word that shows your character you know many times also i forget but these things we need to keep remind ourselves ki whatever things we give to the others those things will come back to me as well right that's the law of karma okay so be very uh, humble about the people okay coming back ensemble methods okay you cover a very high advanced concepts uh, bootstrapping method and then other things definitely those people who are not able to understand it you go back again read it understanding abhi we, we are not much focusing on the ensembling method ensembling method is a general concept you can understand is that it's just like opinion for example i wanted to start a particular let's say i wanted to buy a particular mobile phone right so i went ahead i asked sandeep i asked shivam i asked bhavesh i asked gorav char logo se maine pooch liya right ab sandeep he did his own research his own analysis and suggested me saurabh this is the best brand available until this uh, price range shivam did the same bhavesh did the same analysis and did that and then coming coming to uh, gorav he also did something like that maine kya kiya main bas shivam ke paas bhai result bata shivam ke paas gaya sandeep yeah tell me which mobile should i buy gorav and bhavesh i asked them. Out of these uh, four people, whosoever give me, for the जो भी mobile का recommendation is that for uh, the जिसके uh, frequency is the maximum, I would go uh, without any thought. I will go and select that. So, ensembling method is that. Given that you believe opinion matter नहीं करता in the real life. I have always seen कि भाई majority अलग जो भीड़ होती है that is average. Always think what is better for you. But यहाँ पे ensembling का concept is something कि you trust Shivam. you trust sandeep you trust bhavesh you trust the algorithm behind the gorav whatever things the analysis he is doing right you trust ki okay ye person jo bhi kaam karega best to best mere ko recommendation karega so that they, again i don't have to think about it in that sense opinion those algorithms can be applied there and then you can go for the results okay uh, okay all right let's control personal linkedin yes linkedin is very important platform you know in order to get internships in the couple of months or so you will be starting your internship in fact during your uh, you can take a winter internship as well in the december but in order to get a winter internship you have to work start working from right now first we, you need to build a couple of resumes and projects right and then you need to connect with the hr people ceo people talk to them say hello why comment to their post and then go ahead and ask for reference hey do we have any position uh, i would be very curious to work on some of fantastic projects in your company right in the summer maybe in four weeks or so if things can go good uh, we can continue the same project in the coming summers as well if you think sorry badhiya ho gayi to i can join as a full time opportunity as well right always think in terms of adding value to the company so wo cheez tabhi shuru hogi jab abhi se hum thoda bahut apne pehle profile ke upar kaam kar payenge because as sandeep rightly said ya yeah, shivam rightly said linkedin is something it's your online professional resume 
कुछ भी बोलने की जरूरत नहीं सब चीजें वहां पे लिखी हुई है नेक्स्ट सेशन आर बी कवरिंग दैट एज वेल यूनिक स्पेसिफिक रिपोर्ट थैंक यू फॉर मेजरिंग दैट या डेफिनेटली रिजम इज ऑल अबाउट सेलिंग यू कवर इट दैट ओके या डू द फॉलो अप दो थिंग्स विल बी कवर लेटर how to follow up how to write the cover letter how to write the about section or not but do keep in mind ki these things comes in a single uh, pipeline this things comes in a single path the journey does not ends once you complete your masters degree in fact the journey starts from there itself you will go ahead and you will uh, look for the further good opportunities better opportunities and there itself you will be needing these key important points and that's where the foundation comes in. if you know exactly what you need to do you don't know anything much about it but in the last couple of days you know every nitty gritty of the professionalisms what an analytics person should have isn't that right and again you need to go back again and again and again and again and revise revise those things so this were the most uh, most of the things that i wanted to cover and uh, yeah thank you again uh, drumel odet uh, sandeep shivam you you guys uh, did a fantastic job again uh, let's give a big round of applause for them and definitely not only you understood the picture but i also got to understand a couple of uh, good concepts that i might have forgotten in the last <laughs> past months or years or so okay so before just wrapping up it is about time maybe 8 minutes later uh, we just uh, completed in exactly in the one hour because it started with 8 minutes later or so so i just before we wrapping it up i i wanted to request uh, or maybe ask anyone who has prepared a good notes If you'd like to share, anyone, apart from these speakers, yeah, Bhavesh or Ravi or Vikrama, if you'd like to share your uh, notes, uh, feel free to present your screen or maybe in your notes copy. It would be better if someone has who has present uh, prepared their notes in Word file. That I have be... made uh, notes, but for, for, from the starting parts only. Uh, that uh, Udit okay. and Drumila. Yeah, yeah. The please. data science pipeline. Okay, that's okay. I just wanted to see how you have made the notes. so that okay. if i can see uh, anything can be added yeah so i am presenting please so sir i am going to share something yes sir please go ahead uh kuch din pehle actually linkedin pe maine random ami join karne se pehle kisi person ko pucha tha ki ami ke liye ya analysis ke liye kon kon se cheeze seekhni zaruri hoti hai okay and जस्ट फाइव और फोर डेज पहले उसका उनका मेरा आया था कि तुमको अगर जॉब चाहिए तो द ओपनिंग है तो मैं उनको बोला तुमको समझा नहीं कि क्या बोल रहे एग्जैक्टली वो तो मैंने बोला नहीं नहीं जॉब नहीं चाहिए मुझे इंटर्नशिप चाहिए तो है तो बताओ तो उन्होंने कहा कि नहीं इंटर्नशिप तो नहीं है तो मैंने कहा कि मेरा सीनियर्स है अगर वो अप्रोच करके चलेगा आपको तो बोले हाँ तो अगर लाइक मैं उनका आपको कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर दे सकता हूँ या या डेफिनेटली उसको चाहिए रहा तो उनके पास इंटर्नशिप तो है नहीं Okay. okay so definitely do share that in fact i will float in my own network as well and whosoever the people are needing it we will sharing those details thank you sandeep for bringing this up yeah bhavish please uh, so uh, basically what is data and uh, data analytics just skim through it don't uh, talk about it just skim through it how you have prepared it you have uh, i can see that you have uh, given a very fantastic uh, headings then bullets and then go next so the basic, basic the data things, science pipeline you have also mentioned the basic pipeline okay next uh, so first one and a half year you will be learning through this pipeline and okay okay uh, you are uh, re, uh, you are going to use uh, the tools various tools Great. that will be required and after that you can apply this after you have gained some expertise in this tools you can apply these tools in particular domain okay so, uh, do you in which you wish to make your career so basically this will be the path absolutely so, so move forward uh, move the next so this is a skill uh, required okay fine so move next scripting and scripting killing data so here the python pandas these are the tools okay that's good the okay, exploring next. and the visualization of data this is the okay, matplot so, type all right so basically what you have done is that you have just uh, extracted important key points from the book itself and you have uh, pasted it here okay whatever yes. the thing that's great that's a good way to keep notes thank you bhavish for sharing can okay, anyone else who has uh, done added, added some additional things in your their notes would like to share yeah thank you that would do yeah it actually uh, what i did is that first i uh, first i tried to 
you know uh, get a gist of uh, what it was trying to say and then i uh, made my notes according to my understanding great day. so just walk us through uh, what you were thinking while making notes don't uh, read about the notes uh, whatever the things that you did just walk us through for example i have can see that you have written three v's of the data volume velocity yeah, yeah, variety yeah. that we were discussing mm -hmm. in our first introduction session and you have noted right. down two extra mm -hmm. v's value as variety variety veracity that's good okay type of analytics mm -hmm. you have explained it cognitive analytics you have added it that's good coming to the python okay then you have explained the numpy matplotlib as well that's good power bi okay i can see power bi you have uh, yeah some explained. some visualization tools mm -hmm. and then the machine learning machine learning model. algorithm mm. nice nice then the uh, assumptions yeah okay. then the base can you talk about the assumptions this is very very i like this assumptions okay, can you read it for me the, those two lines assumptions in the linear regression model which one okay yeah okay um, linearity in the curve the first one is the linearity and then it is the normal distribution in x and y variables that uh, both the dependent and the independent variables should have the normal distribution and the third one is the um, homoskedasticity it basically refers to the um, it is basically the convergence and the divergence of the error that uh, pops up uh, when we do some sort of data analysis and then the fourth one is the variance of error term should be constant then uh, no correlation between independent variables and the error term should be normally distributed so these are the one two three four or uh, five uh, five assumptions basically in okay. the linear regression model okay. in fact homoskedasticity uh, it, it itself means the variance of the error term should be constant right yes and beautifully yes. beautifully exactly people just isko yaad kar lo just learn it by heart these important keywords will be asked during your inter inter interviews and all and that's that's right uh, go ahead you have mentioned about the assembling methods combining all the model to come up with it that's good this yes. is a, this is a good way to prepare it was this much only so, so yeah, i could make this good. yeah please uh, thank you uh, navjeet for sharing your screen and your notes welcome all right guys so we are mostly done at uh, 10 minutes over the sh sh schedule and um, hopefully these people added a lot of values to it uh, just go ahead and thank thank them in the group itself i'll just uh, be putting a, a small post about it and then in the next session right uh, just take a quick break to the aaj raat ki puri break le lo and the next session what we will do is that we will directly jump into projects okay so we discuss it right ki hum chote yahan se shuru nahi karenge we'll pick up a project and then we'll bifurcate it understand ki what all the things that are mentioned over here right i will walk you through before going to the projects there are two platforms where you can uh, run your projects and do the things first one is google collab or the kaggle is the best platform even in the book itself you have gone through it if you have gone through it the last pages they talked about it ki why kaggle is the best platform because it provides data itself ready to you second thing it provides a platform where you can leverage the uh, cloud ram and hard disk as well to train your models the gpu a tpu as well and then it it provides a platform to com for competitions as well where you can show multiple notebooks of public uh, notebooks are present you can go ahead and participate with the various competitions as well i also did participated last year well out of 2000 my rank was 500 but we did good <laughs> it was the very first competition twitter sentiment analysis i work i uh, did that project but yeah it was a good experience for me the very first project so we will do something like that we will not participate in it but i will share a particular um, data set a particular problem statement and then again go back again we understood no the first what is the business context how the data is coming then how to do the analysis how to present it beautifully how to do it and then uh, what is the business solution that they are pitching and do remember this acronym that it talks about ki matlab puri pipeline ke andar what is that exact acronym right so uh, you need to understand these acronyms as well what is that o s e m n okay do remember that okay guys so take care bye bye see you thank you guys uh, thank you thank you thank you so much thank you so much